Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. All right, so today on the show, we're going to be talking about the communist agenda and the second wave of corona. Not related, but those are the topics that we're going to be speaking about. Interesting, interesting video I have shared on my Facebook page. I really urge you to, for one time, I've never asked you to drop everything and watch this uh, and watch a video, but for one time, let go of your Netflix for an hour, let go of your, whatever it is that you can, that, where you can spare your hour, let go of that and watch this video. It is so important to watch because it will show you that what is going on today was right out of the handbook of uh, the communist agenda. It is an, a fascinating video from the 1960s where he's basically predicting everything that we're seeing today. The rioting in the streets, the peer pressure, the social media, uh, well, they, not social media in those days, but the social pressure on people to conform their beliefs now to a more communist or socialist agenda. It is like he is a prophet. It is unbelievable. You must go to my Facebook page and see that video. Um, you can go to my public page and see it there. If you're already a Facebook friend of mine, you can find it on my personal Facebook page as well, but it'll be on my public page too. And I urge you to spend the time and to share this video. You need to understand what is happening in the remaking, the fundamental uh, remaking of the United States of America. And thus, you know, what do they say when America sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. All right. All this is coming up. This is a live show. If you want to call in with a question or comment, you can do so. Our numbers are on our homepage at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. We're going to be right back after the break and the news and uh, hope to see you in the chat room as well. Just go to our homepage at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com and press on the red button that says listen now. Let's get straight into the chat room. Just sign in. Israel is located in one of the most volatile areas in the world. Israel is an island of stability and a sea of war and unrest. In the midst of this turmoil, Israel stands out as a beacon of order and human progress. Each week we update you on what's happening in this, the Jewish state, a true light unto the nations. This is Jay Shapiro. Join me every Thursday on Israel News Talk Radio. agenda and the second wave of corona. We're going to be talking today about uh, Alinsky. We're going to be talking about pseudo-socialism. We're going to talk about what's going on in the United States, particularly today, and how people are afraid to speak up. They're afraid to protect themselves and their rights. And we're going to be talking about the second wave of the coronavirus. All of this is coming up on the show. Our guest today is Dr. Mordechai Ben Menachem. He's a researcher, former lecturer at Ben Gurion University, and has authored over 70 books and 400 research papers on science history, and more. He commentates on Mideast and world issues. Welcome to the show, Dr. Mordechai Ben-Menachem. Thank you. All right, so 
on my Facebook page, I have shared a very fascinating uh, video that was filmed in the 1960s. Basically, it's like the guy looked into a crystal ball and was telling us what is happening today back then, so many years ago. And it is frightening to see how... Uh, people in the United States are being intimidated. They're being uh, social pressure. Also, the government is not working. They're talking about defunding police. There's no protection. In many places, people call 911 and they just don't even respond. Um, so what are we looking at? Well, what we're looking at is a, uh, a very, very well-planned, well-thought-out um, uh, process, which people should be aware of, began in 1929. This is not new. This is something that was very well planned, very well thought out, and has been for many years. If you read Herbert Marcuse, if you read Saul Alinsky, if you uh, uh, if you read uh, um, um, uh, uh, what's his name uh, that uh, I forget his name, the, the pseudo Jew who, who whose whose expertise is so is in, is in um, uh, linguistics, um, uh, Humsky, Humsky, no, I'm Humsky. Sorry, my uh, uh, short-term memory. Chomsky. Glad. You mean Chomsky? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, all of these people who wrote about these things decades ago, all of these things are very, very well planned, very well thought out. There, there, there's nothing whatever new here. Even that uh, discussion that you, in that video that you uh, 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 um, uh, sent up on from 1969, even then, it was already 40 years old. These things have been planned for quite a long time. It began in Frankfurt in 1929. It's called the Frankfurt School, when a group of, of uh, 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 um, uh, they called themselves at the time Bolsheviks, but the, the, the name doesn't matter, um, a group of people who came to the conclusion, a group of uh, very, very intelligent intellectuals came to the conclusion that the Bolshevik revolution, as described by Marx, had failed, that the proletariat, I'm using their terminology, the proletariat in the industrialized nations was not going to rise because there was no way for them to organize themselves. They misperceived that, but that doesn't matter. Their conclusion is what was count here. And therefore, a new method needed to be found in order to foment the ultimate revolution. Remember, uh, Regis Debray wrote a very famous book called Revolution in the Revolution. In other words, what we need to understand is that the objective here is not socialism. People are misjudging it. The objective is not socialism, is not communism. The objective is eternal revolution. You're supposed to have revo non-stop revolution from now until eternity, revolution including violent revolution. That is, the, uh, that is the ultimate objective as defined by all of these people. Again, Marcuse, Chomsky, Alinsky, uh, 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 Regis Debray, uh, um, um, uh, 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 this horrible, uh, 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 the horrible monster from Cuba. What was his name? Uh, uh, Castro? Uh, 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 che Ca Guevara, uh. et cetera, et cetera. So is this in order, you know, for the people above the revolution to be able to control? It's like, let's get him and him to fight. And they, they're fighting each other instead of fighting us. And then we're in control. All, all of this is, 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 is and, you, and your question is based around the concept defined by George Orwell in his less famous book, Animal Farm, all animals are equal, but some animals are more, more equal, equal than, than others. others. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Okay. And so why? I mean, why are there people who want to push this agenda? I can imagine that there are people who want to get richer and richer and richer and richer and get more power, more power, more power. But this is a very, very long-term goal. And, it's, and uh, I, I just, what is the motivation for the people behind this? Okay, you're you're asking you're, you're phrasing your question in, in 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 pardon me in double quotation marks in American, not in their terminology. The concept of getting richer, the concept of wealth equals power, is an incorrect concept as far as they're concerned. What you're saying is, I want to be rich or 
so-and-so wants to be rich in order to be powerful. No. They want to be powerful, and if as, as a result of that they also get rich, that's nice. But the objective is power. The objective is political and social power, not economics. You, know, you must not think here like an American. That's why, for instance, they burn down their own their, their buildings that they live in. They burn down the shops where they shop. This is not a question of them getting rich, them getting um, more economic resources for themselves. That's not the issue. It's not an issue of things. It's an issue of power. When they see, remember, uh, 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 Nancy Pelosi is two bullets away from the throne. Two bullets away from the throne. When they see a person like that on bended knee, they recognize that they have tremendous amount of power. You're referring to when Nancy a- Pelosi and all the others were kneeling. Oh, yes. Okay. I mean, they- there is no greater symbol in the history of mankind than somebody who kneels to their conqueror. Right. Okay. You and close the back of your neck in order to make make it easy for the conqueror to behead you. That's the part. That's the purpose. Okay. Keep going. So these are they, they, and and again and again I, I repeat myself. Two bullets away from the throne of the United States. And intentionally, I use that word throne. Because that is the way they're thinking. You must use their terminology. You must think as they think. You must put things in the terms in which they're they're putting it in order to understand what it is they're talking about. And they're when you say they, who is what? they? Are they are they card holding communists? I mean, who 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 is they? Well, uh, 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 again, the concept of card holding communists is a tool. You're, 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 you're elevating the tool above the, above the objective. Communist Party, every communist party, look at the communist parties. What, what, what countries remain communist today? Cuba, China, North Korea, uh, uh, Vietnam, and Laos. That's the only ones. So it's not the communist party that matters here. The party is a the objective is power. You get your click of people, whatever that click means, to have the ultimate power so that you can control everything that's going on. The Soviets used the Communist Party for control. The Chinese use the Communist Party for control. Cuba doesn't use the Communist Party for control. They use bullets for control. Keep going. Every place does it differently. The techniques don't matter. What matters is the result. Now, one of the uh, let, let's let's go over very very quickly the definitions of what the Frankfurt School defined as being their methods for the new kind of control. Remember, they began by saying the proletariat revolution, the Marxist revolution, has failed. In other words, the communist the concept of communist party has failed. That's not what we're talking about. So what do we do instead? What do they define? They define A, destroy the nuclear family. B, make the concept of wealth no longer of any importance. It's not a question of economic wealth. C, destroy everything dependent upon and resulting from religious values. D, destroy everything in terms of values. The value system must be destroyed. In other words, if, if you, if you Tamar, define the idea of honor your parents as a value, as an ultimate value, I'm using that because I know that you do, um, uh, 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 that value, that concept must be destroyed. We see it throughout Europe today. We've talked about this in the past here. We see it throughout Europe. You know, how can, how can the countries like Belgium and, and Sweden knowingly and, and with, with malice of forethought allow tens of thousands of their parents and grandparents to simply die from lack of care? Tens of thousands of people throughout Europe just because they were old. Because they're, the old people are no longer of use. And use is what matters here. If you cannot use them, then why bother with them? 
almost like a concentration camp. You go to this line and you go to this line. You you can work and you're going to the ovens. Exactly. I mean that. Remember the 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 the, the Nazi party. The name of the party was National Socialist. They were socialists. People call them right wing. Do not understand what left right means. The Nazis were the same side of the of, of the political divide as were the communists at the time. The Bolsheviks and the Nazis are the same thing. Different versions of the same idea. Remember, uh, Lenin got his beginning from Germany. Okay, hold it right there. We have to go to a break. We're going to be right back, everybody. The Tamar Yona Show. Tamar? She's sassy. She's smart. She's funny. But she's also a real Jewish mother. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Yona. And yes, I can be all of those things. But at Israel News Talk Radio, I'm here to bring you the news stories and guests that you may not hear anywhere else. Join me live on air Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the most unique and bold talk radio in Israel. The Tamar Yona Show. All right, we're back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, and we're talking today about the communist agenda and the second wave of corona. And in the last segment, our guest, Dr. Mordechai ben Menachem, was talking about how uh, the value system in a communist or socialist type of uh, power structure wants to erode your personal values and uh, wants you to become more of the collective. So that means you're thinking as well. And uh, we saw uh, in Europe today, which also has a socialist leaning, uh, that we, um, we saw the deaths of uh, thousands and thousands of older people because, as our guest said, that they had no use anymore. Now they're just collecting their you know, <laughs> their, their social security type checks. And, uh, and who needs them? All their lives they've worked, and now they're benefiting a little bit from their, their, the sweat of their brow. And the state doesn't have any use for them anymore, and so they're expendable. And that's what we saw. So many people died. So, Dr. Mordechai ben Menachem, how do you want to um, uh, talk now about the second wave of corona that we're in and what's being done? Well, the first thing people need to be aware of is that the concept of second wave is not a new concept. It's not, it has nothing to do with corona. Every... Um, uh, uh, epidemic that has ever existed always has a second wave, and for a very simple reason. It's 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 psychological. It's human. It's human beings. When we 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 see that we're starting to make headway of it, and we suddenly forget all of the restrictions that we put on ourselves, and we allow it uh, to spread once again. It's it's humanity. It's a human thing. I'm not saying anything is. Anybody is wrong here or right here. There's nothing we can do. That's the way humans it's are. It's kind of like built. dieting. Oh, He's I lost built. some weight. Now I can go out and have a banana split. <laughs> go uh, ahead. Uh, probably something like that. I've never dieted, but okay. <laughs> um, it's something like that. That's just kind of, kind of like thing. You, you, you lose the concept of self-control, whether it be for a uh, 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 short period of time or a long period of time whether it be on the individual level or the social level. When we're talking about a second wave of corona, obviously we're talking about that happening on, on a social level. I don't know how you would translate a banana, banana what do you call it, a banana split? A banana split, yeah. Uh, I'm not exactly certain what that is, but okay. Um, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't know how you translate that into a, a social concept, but I think, I think we're, t- we're seeing the same thing. Go ahead. Okay, so... Um, uh, 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 that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a second wave. The second wave may be, again, there's no way to predict this. It may be larger than, it may be smaller than the first wave. It will not be significantly smaller. Again, the, the, there's no uh, uh, precedent for one of these things to be significantly smaller. To assume that it would be significantly smaller is to deny historical precedent. Um the um, uh, 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 we can expect 
many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of more dead people. Um, all of the people, pardon me, I'm going to say something very nasty. All of the people who foolishly tried to tell us that there's no difference between corona and the flu um, um, really did not understand what they were talking about. Um, we see that now. Um, A, uh, uh, the, the silliness of the, uh, uh, I call it evil silliness, but that's, that's a choice, um, of places like Sweden that talked about herd immunity when we have absolutely no knowledge whatsoever of whether there is any immunity at all, and we still don't know that, even after months of doing research, we do not know if someone who has recovered, and I'll go back to that word in a moment, who has recovered from corona has immunity, and if they have immunity, for how long? So again, even now, after all of these months, after almost after half a year of looking at this thing, we do not know if herd immunity is at all possible. For countries to use that as a philosophy was simply ignorance or willful ignorance. Secondly, um, uh, 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 we now know, for instance, that an extremely large percentage in Israel, a, a, a research report was published the day before yesterday claiming 50% of people who have recovered, who are considered recovered from coronavirus, continue to have disastrous symptoms for many, many months. No one knows for how many months yet. It may be, some of these things may be permanent. And these things are very disabling. They create disabilities. They have, you have, you have uh, we're seeing people with very, very strong pains and, and difficulty breathing months after they're, they're recovered and there is no, there are no direct symptoms of the of the COVID-19 disease. So this is also part of the second wave. The second wave is what happens to the people who recovered in double quotation marks, recovered from the first wave. And the answer is that we still do not know. Many of them may not ever recover. They may, they may survive. They may live for many years. And they may live for, in, in, in a great deal of pain and great deal of difficulties to function. And many of them will be permanently disabled. Okay, and so your point. Well, my point is that we're in this. We're already in a second wave. It has already begun. Again, um, uh, uh, everyone should be aware. Stop making these silly noises about being it being the same thing as the flu. It's it's an irrelevancy. It's a totally different kind of virus. By the way, the flu virus is not a corona type virus. Corona type virus means it's 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 it's. Um, I don't want to go into the biology right now, but the but but it's a certain type of virus um, 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 uh, uh, pathogen, viral pathogen. It has certain physical characteristics. The flu, the flu virus and the coronavirus are not physically similar, nor are their symptoms similar. The fact that both attack the lungs is a is is an item of trivia, because we now know the corona attacks much more than the lungs. Interesting. Okay, so we have to be careful about that. So people should look at it uh, more like a, a, a deadly cold because people who have had the cold are not immune from it afterwards. They keep getting the cold and they keep getting a cold and keep getting a cold. Would you? Is that a good – or because it's not no, a virus, would, it's would, not a good example. More like, more, less like the cold and more like the bubonic plague. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, maybe, because, maybe it's not a good example because one is a virus and one is not a virus. All right. Yeah, we have to be very, very careful. All right. So to sum up, uh, we only have another like three minutes left to wrap everything up together. I, and I, I want to go back, if I can, just uh, to what is going on in the States, because uh, lives are in danger there. The American way of life is in danger there. And America was just such a wonderful country with where, which gave people freedom and opportunity and we're seeing this going, just being wound backwards now under social pressure. Uh, people are afraid to talk. They're afraid to speak. You know, I mean, I remember the days in the 1960s, even with the hippies. I mean, we had a revolution in the 60s, a social revolution. But, it, but you weren't afraid to talk. 
You well, weren't afraid I, to I share your mind. That. I was not. I was not there for most of it. Um, you know, fortunately, I had already come home. Um, but um, um, they really aren't. They aren't really aren't all that comparable. The the the, the so-called hippie revolution of the '60s was based upon the idea of destruction of value systems. But that's all it all addressed. Uh, they destroyed the, the the concepts of modesty. They destroyed the concepts of of uh, of. Uh, it was uh, the uh, sexual uh, revolution, which is a disgusting term. Yes. Well, it, it, it was. It was uh, absolutely disgusting. I, I'm not. About- I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that people, even in those days, with the revolution that was going on, weren't afraid to speak their minds. In fact, people were speaking their mind. You had people who were demonstrating against the Vietnam War, and then you had other people who were demonstrating against the Beatles burning their records, and they weren't afraid to go out and do that. Um, you know, no, no so problem with demonstrating. You're, you're right. Freedom of speech was maintained. Freedom of speech was maintained all all throughout the time. I would even say up until half a year ago, freedom of speech was still maintained, even though it began to be with the PC movement. Though people were already afraid on, to talk on college campuses over the last few years. But remember, again, the, the 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 one of the definitions of the of the Frankfurt School was to begin with academia. Was to begin with education. De-escalate education. And you want to the, the term was dumbing them down. You want the population right. to be less intelligent. Yes. The average American now does not was not capable of of laughing at Obama when he said he visited all fifty seven states when there are only fifty because he was too ignorant to even know what he was talking about. Yes, okay. Well, uh we're seeing some big, big changes as you said right now. It is scary to see because uh Again, this this looks like the pattern of a takeover of the American way uh, by a, a socialist communist uh, revolution, and people don't even understand. People who are marching in the, in these uh, and protesting think that they're doing it out of well, we're against racism, and they're doing it for these altruistic reasons, and then they're they're being duped. They're being duped, and yes, they have to wake what, up. This is what Lenin defined as. The, 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 the people being so stupid that will sell you the rope to hang themselves. Yeah, absolutely. That was his definition. He, yeah. actually, he, he specifically talked about doing this. Again, you have to go back to the original writings and look what people actually said in order to understand what's happening now. And Tifa, Black Lives Matter, they're the same thing. They're two sides to the same coin. Right. And all right, we're going to have to... controlled from above by these... People, the um, uh, 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 descendants, if you will, of the Frankfurt School. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. The music is on. We have to end this segment. Thank you very much, Dr. Mordechai Ben Menachem. Thank you very much for having me. When we get back, we're going to be talking also about the coronavirus, but with a little biblical twist to it. We'll be right back. In a time where feelings have become fact, where rational thought and common sense has disappeared, one man stands above it all. I'm Howie Sobaker, your political hitman. Local Hitman airs every Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. North American time, 7 a.m. Israeli time, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Are you interested in transforming your life, drawing closer to the Creator, and uncovering the deeper meanings and hidden treasures in the Hebrew Bible? Then join me, Rav Yitzhak Michelson, and me, William Hall, on the Science of Kabbalah, where we are seeking to narrow the gap between what we understand of our physical and spiritual worlds. So make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Israel Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Israel News Talk Radio. We are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, and we are going to be talking now 
about also as Israel is in the second wave of the coronavirus, we're going to be talking about that, the coronavirus, but with a biblical twist this time. And our guest is Akiva Fold. He is active in the social media and constantly keeping an eye out for opportunities to help in any way he can through his Facebook groups. His most popular being, How Can I Try to Help You Today? If you haven't joined that uh, group, you might want to go look for it. How Can I Try to Help You Today on Facebook and join his group. He's been doing some research lately on the spiritual connection of the coronavirus and happenings here in Israel. So welcome to the show, Akiva Folds. Thank you very, very much for having me. Thank all you. all right. I'm, I'm very excited to. And so uh, what exactly have you been looking at? And you said that you have some rabbis also who concur with you on your findings. Yeah, I, uh, I spoke with a, with a few rabbis about this when I came across this. Basically, I was going through... Uh, the Mishnah, the, the earlier Talmud work of Tanit, of fasting, um, when we talk about uh, basically asking for the rains coming uh, for the Jews and keeping in mind, I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit later, keeping in mind the difference between Israel and the rest of the world when it comes to the rain season. Um, so we were learning it, and all of a sudden the timeline struck me as very, very interesting, and I called a few uh, friends, you know, a few rabbis who were friends of mine, uh, Rabbi Ian Pear of uh, Shir Hadash in Jerusalem, and Rabbi Mordechai Berg, who is a teacher in uh, in Mivaseret, in Yeshiva Mivaseret, he owns a school for uh, young boys coming for their year of learning after high school. I mean, they were both very, very interested in the concept, and they helped me a lot. Um, basically, what we found, what we know, is that in Israel, we... The rain seasons are generally from, you know, October, September, you know, October mainly, till about March, April. From Sukkot, the Feast of the Tabernacles, till Pesach, Passover. From uh, the end of Tishrei, the, the, the month that starts with our Rosh Hashanah, and going through Nisan, the month where we have Pesach. That's basically six months, and that, that encompasses the rain season. And the Mishnah, the Talmud, starts talking about... Um, about when do we ask for the rains and when we talk about the rains. There's a difference between asking for the rains and talking about the rains. We recognize that Hashem is the one who brings us the rains, and we do that at the end of Sukkot, at the end of the, the, the Feast of the Tabernacle. Um, then, but we don't ask for it. Why don't we ask for it? Because people are coming to Jerusalem as per their, you know, the, the three festival pilgrimage, and basically we want to get people a chance to get home before the rain start, and the furthest somebody would go is to towards outside of Israel, and that takes 15 days to get there. So basically, we figured that we start asking for the rains on the seventh of Mar Cheshvan. For people who know, Cheshvan is the, is, the, is the month after uh, is the month after Rosh Hashanah. Um, I'm not going to get into how we count it. It's the seventh month. It's the second month. Uh, it's a whole eighth month or the second month. That's a whole discussion unto itself. But if if we have time later, I'll tell you an interesting personal story about uh, starting to ask for the rains on Zayin Mar Cheshvan, on the seventh okay. of Mar Cheshvan. Um, and uh, and in America they don't ask start asking for it, and outside of Israel they start asking it on December fourth or fifth. I've never understood how that date was chosen, but I know that it, the the reasons exist out there. Um, so on the seventh of on the seventh day of uh, Cheshvan, we start asking for the rains, and then the Mishnah goes into the fact that if by the seventeenth of Cheshvan, uh, the rains still have not yet come, then uh, the individuals uh, start a three-time fast on Monday, Thursday, and the following Monday. Those are the individuals that take it upon themselves voluntarily. If after that Monday, Thursday, Monday fast, the the rain still had income, then the courts uh, decree uh, a more lenient fast days the following Monday, Thursday, Monday, but on the community. Uh, and those, what we say when we talk about a lenient fast, it's, it's not including the night before. And unlike Yom Kippur, um, the Day of Atonement, and Tisha B'Av, the day that we, that we mourn the loss of the temple, um, those days are more stringent fast. They go for 25 hours. 
and there are certain things you're not allowed to do, like wearing wearing leather shoes, washing your hands, uh, marital relations. There's all kinds of things that were held off on. So the first three that are communal, again, Monday, Thursday, Monday, are the more lenient fast. If the rain's still letting come, then the courts decree another three, Monday, Thursday, Monday, and those are the more stringent fasts, like Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av. If those three have not yet come, then we do even stricter ones, not I mean more more intense, for seven Monday, Thursday, Mondays. Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Monday. And basically, if the rains hadn't come by then, then uh, the individuals keep the individuals like we spoke at the beginning keep fasting until the rains come. Uh, but the Mishnah also, the Gemara explains, the deeper Talmud explains that um, that that if it's the rains that are bringing society to threatening society, then the individuals keep fasting. If it's something other than the rains, then uh, the community keeps fasting until it's gone. Uh, I, <laughs> a lot to talk about here, but let's let's uh, get through it. So basically, we go by that timeline. So um, we say in the Talmud that Hashem holds three keys. Uh, there's the key to childbirth, the key to rain, and the key to resurrection. The key to rain, oh, and finally, if by Nisan, by Pesach time, when the harvest is supposed to happen, the rains have not yet come, then we know that it was a sign of a curse. So, now let's step back. So there are three keys that we say, that the Talmud says that Hashem holds. Uh, a key of childbirth, a key of rain, and a key of resurrection. Three different parts of life. And it is explained that rain is our livelihood. So it basically is not talking about rain itself, but it is talking about livelihood. And as we saw from the Talmud, if there are other things that are in our existence other than just the rains themselves. Uh, so now, uh, just I'm going to try to go through this a little bit quickly. Um, the COVID timeline, um, basically, there is there. We know that there are different uh, discussions as to when the first uh, occurrence of COVID was. Um, it seems that the it seems that it was definitely was found by the 17th of November. So this year, um, the 17th, Yud Zayin Marchesim, the 17th of Keshvan, when we uh, determined if the rains haven't come yet, that was the 15th of November, which was a Friday. The 17th of November was a Sunday. So that was the last day before uh, the individuals would start fasting. So on the 18th, the individuals would start fasting. So on the 17th was the first known case then. The first of Kislev, when we say the rains still haven't come yet, that would be uh, November 29th. And on, so the last day before the court declares the light communal fast would be December 1st. First, December 1st, December 1st uh, the hospitals in China um, admit, said that as of December 1st, the, the person who had it showed the first symptoms. Um, then the, so the first light fast would have started December 20th, December 2nd, um, and the first heavy communal fast would have started December 16th, which was the day of the first hospital admissions. Um, the first of the seven heavier communal fasts, uh, the Wuhan Municipal Health Commission started sending out messages about an outbreak to its affiliate institutions. The last of the seven fasts, number one is uh, China uh, told the World Health Organization that there was a human to human transmissible virus, and it was the first uh, occurrence both in the United States and South Korea. So, uh, so basically, we <laughs> we have all that, and so there is actually related directly to the rains the the times of of the COVID, very important days within the COVID outbreak. What we know afterwards is if between the last fast and uh, the end of and the the last fast and the end of Nissan doesn't happen, we are supposed to lower down certain interactions. We lower down our business transactions. We lower down building and planting, uh, engagements and marriages, and finally um, greetings between one and another. Okay, Akiva, we, we that only we have more... one more minute until we go off okay. the air. There's, there's a lot more to continue, but they, very basically, as we've seen at the towards the where we are now from uh, Purim time, uh, say March until until after Pesach, 
we did lower down our business transactions, our buildings, our plantings, and saying hello from friend to friend. That was with the closure. Uh, there is more right. to get into in terms of what happens after Nissan, but there's there's very, very interesting and the next step, if I get another chance, I apologize. It was a little bit longer than I thought. But there is a, definitely a direct connection uh, to the, I believe, upcoming coming of, the, of Mashiach, of Messiah. Repeat that last one. I, I see a very, very strong connection. There's still more to talk about. I apologize. I didn't get all the way there. But there is definitely a very, uh, a very strong connection to the imminent uh, coming of the Mashiach, of the Messiah. And in 30 seconds, can you... Wrap it? Wrap it up? Uh, in, in 30 seconds, uh, we are right now in the Torah portion of Chukat, which was a time where we were cursed by being bitten by a snake and a plague, and we were told to look up at a brass snake and a uh, copper snake and look up to heaven, and that and looking up to heaven, looking up to Hashem, is what uh, brought the plague to an end, and it goes into Pinchas, Pinchas, is Eliyahu Navi, uh, the prophet Elijah, who is the precursor of Mashiach. That's wow. that's in the thirty second version, All but right. it's uh, <laughs> thank more you to so be much, Akiva Full, for coming on. I guess uh, the message is to look up to heaven. That's what we all need to do: to ask God for help and to look up to heaven and uh, repent to you, Chiva. Thank you so much, Akiva. My pleasure. That would definitely be the right message. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips. With scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. Howdy, this is Rita from League City, Texas, now living in Israel. And though my heart may have belonged to Texas, it now belongs to Israel and all the fantastic show hosts at Israel News Talk Radio. Hi, this is Michael Solomon from Kiryat Arba, Israel. And why do I love listening to Israel News Talk Radio? Because I love listening to the interesting interviews they do and their news reporting that most other media sources don't cover. Hey, this is Nicole Eko from Malmo, Sweden. It gets pretty cold here in Sweden, so I love cuddling up with a warm cup of tea while I listen to Israel News Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Frank Norris from Tennessee. Me and my dog Buster really love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio.